This is Secrets to Win Big, your roadmap to sustained growth. Brought to you by Arjun Sen, founder and CEO of Zen Mango, brand whisperer, top brand growth driver, and a former Fortune 500 executive who has been called one of the most marketing intelligent minds in the business. Find him at zenmango.com. And now, here's your host, Arjun Sen. Welcome to Secrets to Win Big with Arjun Sen. This is Arjun, and it's a pleasure to welcome you to this edition of Secrets to Win Big. Winning is fun, but I've found a big win puts you on the path to long-term sustained success. And in this podcast, you'll hear from leaders from around the world, all walks of life, share their individual paths to big wins and success. And when I talk about big wins, my VIP guest today, Tom Cole, is no stranger to to big wins and that to big wins sustained over his career. Tom has delivered big impact through marketing transformation and strategy for over 30 years. His 360 degree business perspective has helped him succeed as an entrepreneur, consultant, agency, executive, and a marketer of leading brands. The agency he founded, Razor, was ranked by Adweek as the fastest growing in US. Today, Tom is the founder of Bradford Marketing. Bradford Marketing works with marketing agencies and national brands to activate brand transformation and deliver rapid growth. Previously, Tom was president of Ansera, served as EVP of JWT, president of Dallas Group, Dallas office of Brand Worldwide, and president of Forbes Group. Tom Cole, in one line, is a business transformation leader who has a long sustained history of making him a big, for arriving, reaching to big impacts fast. Tom, welcome to this podcast. Thank you, Arjun. So Tom, you know, looking at your streak of big wins, both as a client, then batting four clients for, you know, uh, and then coming on the agency side and making big impacts for clients from the agency side. What are some of the biggest success stories and how do you get there? How do you consistently keep hitting grand slams? Yeah, the biggest success story, Arjun, probably was one the, the one you mentioned, the uh, startup of Razor. Uh, Razor was a digital marketing agency that I co-founded and we started it with $25,000 and three employees in some borrowed space. And within four years, we were 200 people and we were recognized by Adweek as the fastest growing agency in the country, as you mentioned. And uh, we did that during some down economic years as well. In fact, one time at a staff meeting when we were in the middle of our highest growth year, I uh, said to the team that Razor had higher net job growth than the entire state of California. And, you know, it was kind of got a, got a little bit of a laugh, but, you know, I said it because I thought we should be proud, but I was also referring to another message that you don't have to let outside circumstances get in the way of your success. You just need to attack with focus and resolve. And that's worked throughout my career. Uh, even now, a current example, um, I'm working with a digital marketing agency named Tandem Theory. And Tandem brought me on May 1st, and they had just, uh, uh, because of the economic shutdown, the COVID-19 shutdown, um, their clients got hit really hard. And so Tandem's revenue fell 40% overnight. So I worked with them on a project called uh, Rising Phoenix, where we said, we're not going to let outside circumstances dictate our fate. We're going to not stand still and just hold on. We're going to grow through this and um, accelerate, uh, get ahead of the pack and set ourselves up for a great 2021. And it's working. Uh, Tandem has won six clients in nine weeks and they can't hire people fast enough. And it's because again, they're attacking with focus and resolve. In a environment like that, when 
especially now when everything outside is making us individually worried and you know there's some really strong negative numbers everywhere you know when you walked in how did you change the morale of this team like how did you make them believe in what you talked about which you said so brilliantly and confidently that we will not let outside events dictate our fate i really think that's a very powerful statement how did you get through how did you make everybody believe and align on that you know statement? Uh, it's a process and in this case i was kind of fortunate that there's a very strong culture to begin with at tandem theory and they had been uh, basically a highly collaborative culture from the beginning so i could build on that but we got together and we were 100 transparent uh first of all um we told the team some of the bad news about some of the clients we were transparent with some of the uh, uh some salary reductions that had to be made temporarily and we were transparent with our plans we shared rising phoenix right away and as we we communicated very frequent, frequently with each win each time that we actually made progress against the the plan that we shared with them uh, to the point where um in our last meeting we announced that Tandem Theory is going to give back all of the dollars to the staff that they had sacrificed in their um in their salary reduction. So they're not whole and we're projecting to have significant growth in uh 2020. So of course, you know, being a leader especially in these difficult times coming with so much conviction and helping a team turn around in such a short time frame and it pays the very fact every team member is getting back the dollars they sacrificed you know who or one incident that inspired you tom the most well you know i think it was an incident a long time ago when i was uh just started out of business school at um pizza hut marketing and um it was you know my first job like that by far and i was feeling a little bit over my head and i remember our head of marketing was uh named david novak and he was a giant to me and uh david one day came walking into my tiny little cube and he plopped down in my chair and he handed me his speech he was going to make to the entire franchise community in a couple of days and he asked me if i would look it over and uh, make some edits and tell him how to make it better so i went home that night and um dating myself here this is before a uh, google docs but i marked up his speech and made some comments and uh actually on one page i crossed off the entire page it just wasn't working so the next day i was kind of second guessing uh maybe i'd gone too far and uh was telling him that his speech wasn't very good um he came into my cube again he took a look he said i agree he looked at the big x he said i hated that section too and he basically accepted every one of my edits and made that speech to the franchise community and uh it inspired me um i felt like i could do anything at that point and i always remember two things i took away from that when i realized that even as an entry level guy i could have a voice and i never gave that voice up and i always remembered the impact that had on me when a senior leader talked to a junior leader and listened and took his advice and i've tried to be a good listener my entire career So if you joined in late you're listening to Tom Cole a business transformation leader with a long history of making big impact and Tom just shared a story from early days of his career at Pizza Hut in Wichita Kansas you know I can relate to that because I was there in that building and what you helped me understand was from day 1 you have a voice and you never give up that voice and second however senior you are you always can get better by asking for advice to somebody who's junior so tom looking at in a novak and other incredible leaders who have crossed your path and of course you have led amazing teams what are a few traits that are important or non negotiable in an amazing future leader. Yeah, I think the traits are about who they are 
more than uh, uh, what they know. And uh, I think um, selflessness is certainly critical. I don't think you can make big impact if you're thinking of yourself more than you're thinking of your organization. I also think humility is very important for a couple of reasons. I think the minute you stop being humble, you stop listening, you stop learning, you stop evolving and you get passed by. Plus, nobody puts all their heart into working for an arrogant leader. And the last one I'd say is, um, I'd say it's courage. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, you know, mediocre results are often found on, a, on the easiest path. And making big impact takes bold moves, and making bold moves takes courage. You know, if you take all these three attributes, you know, selfless, a person with humility and courage, you know, many a time in the corporate world, we just look at that person who just walks in type, you know, type A, 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 triple A, quadruple A personality walks in and changes the whole organization like a storm. But what you're also showing is there are different forms of leadership. There is that leadership who is sustains and based on I think what you look at is the selfless humility and courage. You know, on that note, Tom, you know, one of the things I have to ask, because as I was reading your bio, I just felt that I really must know is what is 360 degree business perspective and what makes Tom Cole so unique for having that? Well, the 360 is I've been fortunate to, you know, look at businesses and look at business situations. As you mentioned in my introduction, you know, as a consultant, as someone working for the brand, as an advertising agency executive and as an entrepreneur. And all of those perspectives are very different. And I found early in my agency career that having worked with a client um, helped tremendously. I thought like a client and, um, you know, having uh, started my career uh, in a family business has probably helped me as an entrepreneur. Great, thanks. Uh, what's your business story that you've shared most often, you know, as a leader? You know, it was also uh, a Pizza Hut story and it deals with unintended consequences. And it was a long time ago, I remember Pizza Hut was um, making a push to overtake Domino's and delivery market share. And they had a big operations initiative. They wanted to get 90% of their deliveries under 30 minutes. So they put the measurement systems in place. They put the incentives out there and they launched it. And sales plummeted. They just uh, went through the floor. And we were scrambling to figure out why. But actually the store managers figured out why before we did. See, they knew the key to getting 90% of their deliveries under 30 minutes was having enough drivers Mm -hmm. uh, on staff in the store to make the deliveries. So what they did, and I'm dating myself here again, was uh, on their multiple phone lines, they just didn't answer some of them. They just let them ring off the wall. They basically only took enough calls to where they knew they could deliver it on time. So they managed the order level down. So I really took two things away from that. Um, one is, you know, I always learned to try to think one more step. You know, what about this then what about that and uh it served me well and I, I learned a real important lesson that you have to make yourself ready for success and ready for a big impact uh, for instance at tandem and the recent success we've had um, we didn't even focus on new business till we made sure that the hiring pipeline was in place and we had some you know quality candidates that we could bring in in a hurry because otherwise that early success would have evaporated and then to your question earlier um, we wouldn't have been able to sustain the good news in front of the staff and we would have lost a lot of momentum. So early success evaporates if you do not make yourself ready for success. And you know, as you were talking about not enough delivery drivers and how store operators were adjusting, at the same time, you were, I think at Pizza Hut, I was at a different pizza restaurant chain, Papa John's. And what we realized was we found a leading indicator of sales where we could predict what our maximum sales could be, would be seven or 10 days before. And that was very powerful because at Papa John's, we shipped dough balls to restaurants 
And we knew eight to 10 days before how many dough balls they're getting, which meant on Super Bowl night on a, for a restaurant, we knew that that restaurant is not going to sell more than 2,000 pizzas because they were ordering 2,022 dough balls. So for us, again, looking ahead and managing that and helping them believe that they can sell more and giving them the path was very important. And I really love that example of the delivery drivers because many a time when we think big, we forget what's that one more step that you talked about is a brilliant concept. And I think all of us will take that from this conversation with you. And again, thank you, Tom, for sharing that one concept. Certainly. So Tom, in the business world, you know, success is not always guaranteed. Like in that journey, many a time, and you know, most of us face nearly imminent failure. Some of us give up, but then some of us don't. And that when you don't give up and you march through that, it gets you to some of your biggest wins. You know, could you share examples or stories on something like that in your career? But more importantly, what got you the confidence and what did, you know, how did you turn that imminent failure to be one of the big major wins? Yeah, I would say that, um, sure, a business failure um, early in my life, it turned my life around forever. And um, my father was a uh, small town Chevrolet dealer and I worked for him as a commission, straight commission salesman. And, uh, you know, I was doing okay. And um, I was certainly enjoying the life of being a big fish in a small pond, but I really didn't have a plan other than that. And I really didn't have a great work ethic. I was just kind of having fun. And then a bad economy and um, my father's history of, not controlling the spending all that tightly. Uh, he, along with a lot of small town car dealers at the time, went bankrupt and he had nothing. And there I found myself with, without a plan, um, without it, any money or resources, and only a couple of college classes under my belt. And I just felt completely lost. Um, but it shocked me. It shocked me into action. And I moved to another city. I financed myself through school, graduated with honors and um, got a job after that, got a fellowship to go to business school, graduated at the top of my class, and then from there had a successful career. But I think it was in that shock, a couple, there was a couple of things. First of all, I realized that um, how quickly things can go from great to go, to go south on you. I never took success for granted again after that. I swore I was never gonna feel that lost feeling again. And that really became my, my drive and my motivator. And my work ethic changed dramatically. And lastly, um, what's really impacted me my whole life is I swore I wasn't gonna be 60 years old and broke like my father was. So, you know, I've, I've done well, but I've always made sure to live well within my means. So that would never happen to me. Yeah, I grew up in India and my grandma, she lost her husband, my grandpa, at the age of 38. And as a traveling life insurance salesperson, built this house and as she raised three kids. Mm -hmm. And that house is fascinating because without, you know, those are days if you go back to 1930s, 40s, is there was no loan. So she built one room at a time. And in between rooms, there are windows because as she added another room, it was too expensive to fill that. So one time I asked grandma, so grandma, how do you do it? And she just gave me this rule of quarters. She said, hey, you know, if you make $1, of course she talked to me in rupees, you know, growing up in India. She said right away, break it into four quarters. One goes for taxes and everybody else, you know, everything else, you don't have any control. The other quarter goes for, you know, committed future which is children's education, things you have to pay. The other quarter goes for your future long term. Now you have a quarter left and you live within that quarter because that's who you are. And to me, I really love that simplicity and you breaking it down. I really connected back to my grandma, Maiji. I used to call her Maiji, her memories. So that was really priceless for taking me back there. That's a great story. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. So, Tom, 
you know, especially when you work from outside and when you are meeting a client and being on the client side, we get very impatient. We are expecting the agency to walk in, know where we are, feel the pulse of the customer and start producing right away. So how do you help your team in different industries as you guys work in to f constantly feel the pulse of the customer? How do you do that? Well, I'll answer that first of all in the context of tandem theory, my current role. Um, and as, as you mentioned, tandem, the tandem team can only really add the maximum amount of value for the clients if they know the client's business as well as they do, right? And that's a big chore. So um, I'm a big believer in intellectual curiosity. So, you know, I found it interesting that Tandem, when I joined them, they were already emphasizing a culture of curiosity. Uh, look for curiosity in, in the hires they make. Curiosity was actually on the, um, the review form and the performance measure. And, um, you know, I know since I've joined, um, personally, I ask a lot of questions. I'm a big believer in asking questions, as I mentioned earlier. But um, probably, you know, most important is there's a couple teams that are dedicated. The data science team, for instance, um, they are constantly mining customer data and helping find gold in it for their uh, clients. But also they, there's a research team that helps, um, you know, helps understand the competitive set, helps understand the, the client's business, a big investment to uh, being close to the client. And a culture of curiosity always uh, keeps you close to your customers, I believe. And extending that, how do you see the next big idea in the industry for your clients? Because, you know, the work you did in the past from, you know, for, uh, from outside for Domino's, has been breakthrough and you know based on industry sources it's one of the key elements that puts the brand into this rapid growth phase so how do you see the next big idea so what's the magic there secret well given currently i'm in the uh, uh digital marketing agents or digital marketing space um everything is about the customer experience mm -hmm. positive frictionless customer experiences and um, I think the digital agencies that are the absolute best with data and analytics and content are going to dominate. You know, and I, I mentioned that um, I mentioned Tandem has data and analytics at their core, and they call themselves a customer experience agency and have a, a strong content team. I think they're well positioned for rapid growth in that space, and that's what they're seeing right now. So with all these years of experience, if you were to take a step back and Tom from 2020 had to have a conversation with Tom from 1995, 1990, what would be one advice you would give Tom? I would, uh, I would tell young Tom to enjoy the moment more. Um, young Tom might have had a, a great work ethic but it came at some cost. Uh, my personal life, um, my, my youngest son, I know there's a good age spread between my three kids and it can certainly feel the difference in the amount of time I invest and the time I've spent with my youngest. And, you know, it's easy to see now, but I was blind to it back in those days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to me, I think that's, one of the things in the corporate world we all must realize that there's one piece of wealth all of us have exactly the same we all have 24 hours in a day and we all make a choice how we distribute those dollars sorry distribute those 24 hours that time and i think that gets us the roi as you talked about in life so tom with somebody like you a leader i always find that great leaders have a process because success that is planned has a process can be repeated. So for you, what's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning, when you start your day, and what's the last thing you do before you're winding down and towards the end of the day? Sure. The first thing I do is visualize. 
I, um, every morning I get up, I go downstairs in my building to the gym to get my workout in. And while I'm sitting there on the exercise, while I'm riding on the exercise bike, I run through the day. I visualize what meetings I'm going to have, what conversations I'm going to have, how I'm going to approach those, what's the outcome. And, um, you know, I get my day started that way. I also like to uh, visualize the long term. I'm all, always kind of running through um, where's tandem theory going to be in one year? Where are they going to be in two years? Where are they going to be in three years? And, you know, I, I play with that in my mind all the time. And, you know, I find that the more I visualize, the more things tend to play out that way. Um, it's a big help. Um, at the end of the day, it's very old school, but <clears throat> I'll take my list and I'll see what I've checked off and what I didn't get checked off. And I'll make my new list for the next day. And I'll look at my calendar for the next day. That's how I wind up uh, my work day before I walk away and try to leave it behind. Um, my end of day itself, you know, if, if I'm not falling asleep watching a movie or something, I just try to remind myself how you know, fortunate I am not to take it for granted. So that was Tom Cole, business transformation leader who has a long history of making big impact and he's not done yet. And I can, I'm looking forward to Tom, bigger impacts in future and to talk to you back in the show soon. But today for all of us, here are a few things that you gave us which would be priceless for all of us one is for those of us who are just starting our career what you taught us it's never too early to have a voice from day one have the voice and have the courage and never give up that voice and those of us who you know are little more on the mature right side you know senior I really think we need to keep the door and the window open. We need to always understand that feedback gets us better. Feedback, asking for feedback doesn't make us weak. And I think that was a great combination on the corporate side for all of us to learn on how we can strengthen ourselves and create future leaders. I also love the whole focus all through that you had about having intellectual curiosity ask a question you need to know the business just like your clients do at that level for you to be part because i really think what you showed me there is the difference between a vendor and partner is exactly there once the knowledge level is at par you become a partner and finally the whole concept of 360 degree perspective even though you kept it so simple i was trying to look at by saying whoa it's not that simple you looked at things from future, then from past. You talked about your seeing, looking at tandem, where they will go five years from now. At the same time, you're looking from the past to where you are, so you didn't take it for granted. You're looking at as you guys are bringing talent in. And also this brilliant thought that you had that you shared with us was make yourself ready for success. Because many a time when we cross the first threshold of success, we do not know what to do next. And that can be our biggest failure, not knowing how to get through. And the example you gave was even before you turned tandem around, you guys were looking for hiring the next set of people and how to move the brand forward. Because early success evaporates if you do not plan and you're ready for success. You heard from Tom Cole. Tom, thank you for sharing your wisdom and taking the time. Thank you very much. So thank you all for listening to Secrets to Win Big with Arjun. As always, it's a pleasure to listen to incredible leaders with big wins who grace us and come here and share their unique paths and secrets. For those of you listening on Facebook Live, thank you for your time. Please share this podcast with friends and you know, come back and listen to more. And any like from you, 
I really appreciate that. Thank you. You've been listening to Secrets to Win Big with Arjun Sen, founder and CEO of Zen Mango, brand whisperer, top brand growth driver, and a former Fortune 500 executive who has been called one of the most marketing intelligent minds in the business. To learn more, visit www.zenmango.com. Share this podcast with your friends and subscribe wherever you like to listen to podcasts. 